happy Pride, everyone. Welcome to Leveraging ERGs to Create an Inclusive Travel Program and Organization. My name is Emma Shagram. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Manager of Flight Center Travel Group, including FCM and Corporate Traveler. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about employee resource groups, also known as ERGs or BRGs for short, um, and how they can support LGBTQ plus communities within an organization. So before I introduce our fantastic panelists, I just want to get one question out of the way. What are employee resource groups? I want to turn to uh, the Canadian Centre for Diversity and Inclusion's definition. Um, they say that ERGs serve to provide groups of employees with a formal structure within an organization to support their unique, unique needs when it comes to visible or invisible identities. So they provide opportunities for development, for networking, recruitment, feedback, um, and lots of other benefits for both the business and the employees. So the first ERG was established by Xerox actually in the 60s. Um, the CEO of Xerox met with black employees to discuss how the company could better serve and support them amidst the fight for civil rights that was happening in the USA. So today ERGs can take a lot of different forms depending on the organization. And I'm very much looking forward to diving deeper into all of this today with our panelists. Um, joining us for our discussion today is Hervé Levenant, who is the Managing Director of Logistics Services of United Airlines. Welcome, Hervé. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, and also Leo Del Rosario, Senior Vice President of Human Resources of the New York Islanders. Leo, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. So glad to have you both join us. Um, I guess I wanted to kick it off a little bit by just hearing more about your ERG's uh, story and how we got here. Um, Hervé, do you want to start? Oh, absolutely. Thank you very much, Amizu. So if you will, we started in 2014 on the eve of Christmas. And what started initially was the amalgamation of two email lists of LGBTQ employees into a group that was fully organized to, at the end of the day, positively influence United on its goals for inclusion, to increase awareness, to increase understanding around the LGBTQ issues, and to create opportunities at the end of the day, so that all in, we can support the company's reputation, but we also be a connected group of employees, so we provide these networking opportunities so that we can engage with our people, so we can help them um, elevate themselves at the end of the day. And that's actually also our strategies organized in this day and age to make sure that we provide, create tangible values for tangible value for employees. Today, we've just passed 5,000 employees this past week that belong to the BRG, which to us is a significant milestone. We're one of the largest BRGs at United um, in the present time. Amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, Leah, how about you? What's your ERG story? Yeah, so <clears throat> ERGs for us at the Islanders in UBS Arena is much more in its infancy stages. A lot of it is driven by just the, the evolution of the organizations as we are growing. Uh, UBS Arena was just opened in 2021, so we're very much a young organization, partnered with a 50-plus-year-old hockey uh, club, you know, in, in a sport that, quite frankly, is not as diverse um, and definitely uh, opportunities recognized by the NHL to continue to diversify not only the fan base, but, you know, really hockey as a whole. We are in the process of establishing several uh, ERGs, and it's really a grassroots effort from our employees who either have experience previously um, and understand you know, the importance of these groups, not only for networking, but for personal and business development. Um, so, <clears throat> and then our sister parent company, Oakview Group, has also been establishing employee um, resource groups from a more a larger corporate organization, as well as seeing some with the NHL. And so we're able to leverage them uh, as resources while we build our local programs out. So very much in the infancy stage, very exciting because it's driven, again, it's driven by our employees um, who are the benefactors of, you know, having these types of opportunities. And we really can't make them successful uh, unless we have that buy-in from, from our associates. 
Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, at FCTG, we're also kind of towards the beginning of our ERG story. I would say chapter one, um, we just launched five uh, ERGs at the start of this year. Um, one is for LGBTQ plus inclusion, and the others are for racial equity, gender equity, accessibility and disability inclusion, and then also environmental justice. Um, so the way our ERGs work is that they each have a compensated employee coordinator, an executive sponsor or two, um, and of course support from myself, the DEI manager. Uh, right now, our LGBTQ plus ERG has 56 members um, and growing, which we're very excited to see. Um, I think if this is like chapter one of our ERG story, our preface uh, was diversity committees. So um, they served kind of a similar purpose, but I would say some of the key differences were, you know, between diversity committees and ERGs is that the committees aren't necessarily dedicated to those specific focuses in the same way as ERGs, you know, being, you know, focus specifically on LGBTQ equity and inclusion, for example. Um, also ERGs have like very specific missions, but clear like objectives, clear results um, to keep us on track with those missions too. And then I think another thing that we've been doing differently, you know, from our precursor uh, is that the ERGs uh, of the coordinators of each group are compensated, right, for their time, their skills, the energy that they're dedicating to, to this. Um, and I think it's such an important piece uh, in the longevity of ERGs because they serve such important purpose in the organization's DEI strategy. I know that you both spoke to this a little bit so far, but I wanted to dive in like a bit further um, and just kind of ask you both, how do ERGs fit into the overall kind of DEI strategy for an organization? Leah, do you want to get us started with that? Obviously, there's a great networking opportunity and the larger your organization and my experience previously, you know, with global organizations is just you know, that opportunity to connect professionals within your organization, you know, who are who who share particular affinity groups or have an understanding of one another, be it culturally or psychologically or or uh, from a gender uh, affinity perspective. So I think um, that's that's one. It fits into your DNI strategy because it's a sharing. It's really a think tank, right? Like a sharing of thought um, and growth and personal development. And, you know, most pillars with a successful focus on diversity, equity, inclusion, when you think about your employees, the obvious is usually recruitment, um, right? But it's not the only thing. Um, you want to talk about development, mobility, uh, grow, general growth, right? And then the business purpose, which I think is another great piece of ERGs that we sometimes forget about because of the cultural um, and social component that we're thinking about when we're focused in on these particular groups. Um, but really, you know, this idea, this ability to bring people together and generate business solutions, you know, that might not have come from your, you know, your usual uh, strategy session or your typical or, or look, quite frankly, your less diversified strategy session. Um, and so it isn't just the functional knowledge that helps to build these business solutions, but it becomes the cultural, social and economic um, perspectives that come into play as well. Absolutely. Thank you, Leah. Uh, everybody, what do you think? Uh, how do how do ERGs fit into an overall DEI strategy? So I would echo what Leah said. Um, if you look at how we've actually structured Equal, we have a national board and that national board supports two really big themes. The first one are chapters. We have nine chapters throughout the globe, and that's really the conduit to uh, organize the event for members, to actually federate our members together. But on the other hand, we really have what I call our committees with actually each committee as a board member that sits on our board. And those committees are architectured along the lines that Leah highlighted. So it starts with um, an events chair and that chair is actually coordinating events that the national board is organizing on behalf of all members, uh, whether these be recruiting events, whether these be pride events, whether these be five side shots and so on and so forth. And I think we'll dive into this a little bit later. We also have a talent share. That talent share is exactly here to coordinate anything that goes into recruiting, anything that goes actually into coordinating with our apprenticeship program. We have a strategic initiatives chair, again, to make sure that we're pushing our strategy forward. 
that we target the initiatives that matter for employees or for prospective employees at the end of the day, if you think about it as well. And we have a communication chain because we've got to make sure that at the end of the day, we very strategically think about how it is we communicate to engage with our employees, but also to educate the company to raise their awareness around the issues it is we have in the communities to make sure that we bubble them up in a way that is efficient at the end of the day for the corporation, because we do a lot of advisement as well. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Yeah, amazing. I think there's so much that you're both saying about, you know, just being intentional about how ERGs are structured within an organization and having those, you know, lines of accountability so clear um, and really just kind of like set up across uh, different like seniority and departments. Um, it's so important. I think uh, there's a principle in the disability justice community, community that I think applies in so many different areas across just equity in general. And that's nothing about us without us. Um, you know, if organizations are going to take seriously their commitments to equity and inclusion and being, you know, a diverse and effective company, it needs to be in partnership with the people who are most impacted. Um, we have to move forward together in dialogue, in partnership, um, and employee resource groups are a fantastic structure to really facilitate and create that space. Um, you know, whether we're thinking about, you know, asking ERG members to take a look at your travel program, for example, from the lens of gender, from the lens of disability, the lens of faith or ethnicity, um, or, you know, just listening to people's experiences about work culture, ideas even for, you know, policies or programs that support career growth. I know both of you were talking about development as like a really core focus for ERGs and BRGs. Um, and also like even just tapping into ERGs for brainstorming ideas about marketing campaigns, how can we resonate with our target markets? How can we be more relevant and, and you know, successful as a business? Um, I think that strong sort of DEI strategy combines quantitative data and also the qualitative data of stories and experiences and conversations that are happening, you know, between that diverse group of stakeholders. Um, and that's really how we come together to be successful. When it comes to LGBTQ plus ERG specifically, um, how can they be set up to sort of best support members of those groups who um, have the most barriers to equity? So if we're thinking about like intersectional experiences of queer people of color, of disabled LGBTQ plus peoples and so on, um, how can ERGs uh, support people who basically are the most equity deserving within them? Um, everybody, do you want to start with that? Sure, thank you. Um, you know, that is actually something that is near and dear to my heart. Um, one of my best friends, a very successful officer at the Shell Corporation, um, and he's black, um, but he's also gay. And the first thing people see when they see him is that he's black. Very quickly, quickly they also see that he's gay. But the one thing that mocked me that we had in conversation probably 15 years ago, was that whenever he's in the black community, oftentimes people are like, yeah, you're black, I don't wanna speak gay. But when he's in the gay community, like, yeah, I wanna speak gay, I don't wanna speak black. And we have got to be able to bridge that gap. And so a lot of the work we do at Equal is very intentional in partnership with the other BRGs to make sure that we create those bridges, to make sure that we educate, to make sure that we help shape the conversation at the end of the day, so that people be comfortable being whom it is they wanna be, regardless of color, regardless of gender, because at the end of the day, the way I've always spoken to the other BRGs and to our members is that all members, other BRG members as well, because of this deep intersectionality, the LGBTQ plus community is black, is white, is Asian, is blind to the color of people, is blind to the gender at the end of the day, because it is your inner fabric. And so a lot of that intersectionality comes into play when we do events. Our first Pride event this year, was an inter intersectional panel around LGBTQ in the workplace, regardless of color. And that was, you know, for us something that was important to do 
but partnering with a black BRG to actually do that event. We've also done an International Family Day event with a family BRG. And that's how we help bridge, bridge those gaps. That's not the only way. We also realize that when we partner with the other BRGs, when we go to the health and benefits team, we're actually stronger into achieving outcomes. And when you think about where we have the most inequity, which is what we were talking about early on, right, in this question, this is actually where we have the most inequity and we're stronger together at the end of the day. And so by partnering with all the folks, we actually achieve better outcomes for people. Absolutely. I think I've seen the same pattern at FCTG where a lot of people who signed up for one ERG are also members of others too. Um, Leah, do you have any thoughts that you want to share too about intersectionality and the ERG strategy? Yeah, I think, I, I mean, I have a hit on, on really just the, the core focus of, of coming at, at the issues of intersectionality. And I think that it's really around, you know, at the end of the day, each of these, each of these pieces is who is who that person is, right? It, the, you're not, you're never, I'm not just a woman and a person of color. I'm a woman of color, right? Or, you know, and then you're an ally perhaps, right? So, and, and that's why we see, you know, folks who, who are employees who, who understand um, the importance of diversity, equity, inclusion um, and embrace it are going to be part of multiple ERGs. And so I think that, uh, that's just a, it's just it's just a given, right? Because it's just where the interests lie and the and and the priorities lie. Um, and I think that the way that we support each other is really is not only in it's through the natural process of education, right? By interaction, um, but also openly offering the resources, and then most importantly, the advocacy, right? Um, and and that's really the open advocacy, and it's it's about not trying to make someone. Uh, choose or say, you know, I, you know, I'm disabled. Oh, but, but, but I'm gay. Oh no, I'm gay. But then, oh yeah, I'm no, you just, you are right. You are Leah, you are Arabic, you are M. Like it's just that. Um, and I think <clears throat> the importance, and you had mentioned it, of a supporting each other is to participate because then someone who doesn't know can't make the decision for you. Right. You talked about like participating like, with the travel programs or with you know initiatives as we look at marketing campaigns. We all have the opportunity to let that voice be combined. Um, and I think that that's how you break down these this intersection, this intersection, well, not break it down, but this is how you sort of erase that that idea of intersectionality and really just look at it as, you know, how are we supporting the human um, you know, and 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 highlighting what is special about, you know. The, the affinity group. Absolutely, I'm, I'm so glad that you brought up the idea of allyship too. I think um, when it comes to like LGBTQ ERGs, if we think about allies, it's like, oh, just straight cisgender people. But I think it's so important to acknowledge allyship within and across LGBTQ plus communities because our experiences are not all the same. You know, how can I, as a cisgender queer woman, support the trans people around me? Or how can non-disabled LGBTQ people support the disabled queer people around them? And I think those of us with any access to privilege privilege and platform and decision making and influence can be really intentional about using that to uplift the people in our communities with that experience of intersecting systems of oppression, yes. right? I think um, like an ERGs can be such a cool space of building that allyship within each community and also across, right, in terms of like partnering with different ERGs and BRGs um, and using that space for education, right, learning from each other um, as a space for listening and like teaming up and committing, you know, with each other, right? Like our, our freedoms and our safety, yours is just as important as mine and I'm going to stand with you, even if I'm not personally infected by, you know, the things that, that you are. You know, from my standpoint on allyship, one of the reasons why it matters is very candidly because we are minorities. And without the sponsorship of an ally, of allies altogether, the 5%, the 7% can't aspire to get the rights it deserves and to be treated the way it wants to be treated we will always be in the minority. That's a fact, right? But if we get the support of the majority by winning the hearts and mind, 
we can help shape, po shape policies that are going to benefit our minorities from the sake and from the standpoint of saying we have got to have the same human rights than other groups. And so a significant body of work around what it is we do is advocacy and education of our allies to make sure that they understand our key issues, to make sure that they are by our side for those key issues and that they support us, that they advocate on our behalf so that we can actually create tangible progress for the community. I'll just add to that how important it is. It often gets overlooked, right? And I think the power of the power of allyship um, for those who come from, you know, the place of privilege, as, as it's sometimes called, is, is so important because they have the ability to learn more, educate themselves, and then educate others um, and expand the message. Um, and I think uh, from the perspective of the ERGs or from the DEI, it's really helping allies to understand their role and the importance of it and being very deliberate about the assistance um, or the, the guidance that you 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 get from them. Um, you know, you you really can't be successful. I mean, everybody's right. It's, it, and, and sometimes it doesn't even matter whether you're part of, a, you know, part of a, an affinity, particular affinity group or not. It's really, you know, where what is your role and where's your place in that organization? And what is your level of influence? And so what does that mean and how do you apply it to assist those who are who are growing or learning or developing within the organization or not in a place where you are um, or haven't had the opportunities afforded to them historically and not necessarily by that particular company, but just because it is the nature of of the workforce, you know, that is growing and evolving. So uh, allyship should it's, it's very important to me that allyship is always discussed. Um, and it's important too, because I think sometimes ERGs, people believe that if you're not part of that group, you're not, you're not welcome um, in an ERG. And that's, that's so the opposite <laughs> of inclusion and, and so why it's so important that we are deliberate about reminding folks that, you know, um, that if, if a harmonious community is something that is important to you and growth and development of your employees is something that's important to you, then be a part of, of this, be an ally. Um, and, and raise your voice alongside with the others. Can you speak to a little bit about uh, what has been happening, like what the ERG has been doing so far and maybe some things that are coming down the pipes, especially for you, Lee, I know that you're just kind of getting started and there's so much to look forward to. Do you want to start us off with that answer? Yeah, so we, again, we're still forming our organizations, but I think uh, what's great is like we have had a couple of opportunities. So from the, the, the team perspective or from the sport perspective, obviously, you know, we have, uh, particularly during the season, you know, acknowledgments of the the various heritage uh, months or, you know, pride. So pride is in June and we're not in hockey season anymore unless we're in the Stanley Cups, which unfortunately for us this year, we're not. Um, but uh, we have, you know, a, a night. And so from a public and perspective, right, we, we try to offer a lot of support, you know, designated games, et cetera, uh, activities out in the community. From an employee resource group perspective, you know, those are more, we have our internal opportunities. So our uh, women's network has already like done a couple of panel and networking opportunities, um, you know, like a luncheon. So different things that offer both the social, the networking, and then an education component where we have speakers from the outside, you know, uh, particularly women executives in the sports industry or the sports and entertainment industry. Um, we've had already an opportunity. So the president of uh, UBS Arena, our, our building and our home uh, as the New York Islanders, um, is, a, is a gay female. And she has had, and she's a wonderful resource and a mentor. And so we're starting to build out, you know, th those kinds of programs as well. Um, so I think we have lots of opportunities that we're, we're, Looking forward to every. I'm. I'm so. Your your program is so much further along uh, than ours, and so I think it's always great to learn. And then, uh, particularly the the things that we can scale. Sometimes it's tough because you get excited about a program that someone has, but it's a fifty thousand employee company, and when you're a two hundred employee company, it's not always the same. But there's always a variation of of that program and guidance that we can give. So, all right. So we have a lot of exciting programming at United Equal, um, and it is strategically aligned with the chairs I've mentioned a little bit earlier. 
uh, that wouldn't surprise anyone. So one of the first uh, event that we've done this year was actually a international wide wave flight in partnership with Virgin Australia for World Pride in Sydney. So a 777 from United Airlines that was flown entirely by an LGBTQ crew that was dispatched by LGBTQ dispatchers that was handled on the ground by LGBTQ folks. And that wide body flight on that 777, we managed to actually get a very cute koala sticker, huge size, several feet wide and high that actually was carrying an LGBTQ flag. So for us, that was a huge marquee event because we'd never been able to do that. To do that. And as a BRG, we were the first BRG to actually have um, that at the end of the day. We've also partnered with NGPA, which is National Gay Pilot Association, in order to uh, promote the LGBT cause to shape the pilot pipeline. And so the winter warm up in Palm Springs this past year, this past uh, February, we've actually announced more in scholarships for future pilots than any other corporations out there. Uh, and we actually provide full scholarships upwards of $71,000 of tuitions for aspiring pilots. When we think of the other airlines, uh, competitor of that are more in the five to $10,000 mark uh, because they're not providing full tuition. And at the end of the day for us, that is our ability to shape the pilot pipeline in a way where down the road, our pilots will look like society looks instead of being very male, straight, centric. And that is very important to us. Uh, we've also had a wide array of speaker series events. We've had a five-side chat with the Houston Pride Grand Marshal. We've had intersectionality events, like I talked a little bit earlier. Uh, we've had, uh, whether this be with our Black BRG, with our Family BRG, with a Women's BRG, We've done community events, uh, back to school kids, uh, back to school kids for LGBTQ kids. Um, um, we've had obviously a lot of pride events over the years. Last year, we supported 12 pride events. Initially, we're going to support 14 pride events. We just added at the last minute a 15th pride event uh, this year. Uh, so, a lot of good work here. But the thing I'm most excited about is actually what's to come in the future. There, there is another BRG, which shall remain unnamed, that created a fascinating mentorship event, a uh, mentorship uh, program, I'm sorry, at United. And I always tell my team, if I see something I like, we're going to shamelessly pilferage it, steal it, and make it better. So we're about to launch a mentorship program at Equal, which is very enthusing for me. Thank you both. It's so exciting to hear, you know, how organizations are using ERGs. Um, I can share a little bit about what FCM and Corporate Travel are doing. Again, we're just getting started. Um, but so far this year, we've gotten to know each other as a group. Uh, we've done a workshop together on trans allyship. Um, we also organized some office gatherings for Pride Month. Um, and this, we're also partnering with the Accessibility ERG um, to spotlight and learn about LGBTQ plus mental health. So Again, really speaking to the education piece um, and sort of that like coalition, you know, intentionality about uh, sharing and learning from our experiences. Um, I, when we first started, we asked ERG members what they were hoping to get out of the group. Of course, again, we wanted this to be like employee led and very, you know, uh, bottom up kind of, you know, collaboration. Um, by far, one of the biggest themes was connection. So we really wanted to be intentional about finding ways to center that with the ERG. Um, and then another theme was education, both for people who identify as LGBTQ and also people who don't and just want to learn how to be better allies. Um, and then, of course, the other thing, too, uh, that came out of that survey was just how do we give back in really meaningful ways? So I'm looking forward to, to seeing more of all of those things and then also seeing just how that sort of collective knowledge and lived experiences from all of our ERGs can influence our organization. You know, what ideas can we bring together to support LGBTQ um, clients even and preserve like our inclusive workplace culture ourselves, things like that. Um, 
so far we've even done just like some small things in terms of like uh, uh, making our uh, our year end celebration um, more inclusive for for our employees um, with input from our ERG coordinators, which is really nice to see. Um, and also create an opportunity for that celebration um, to give people a chance to give back to the community. Um, we know that was something that was so important for so many people to feel you know, connected outside of just our, our organization internally. Before we wrap up, I wanna give you both a chance to sort of uh, add anything else that we didn't get a chance to speak to. Um, Leah, is there anything else that you wanna add? Now, uh, just one I'll share um, just from the, from the perspective of our LGBTQ um, plus um, who hasn't created their name yet, but uh, that ERG, um, one of the areas is a particular focus that the, the committee chair has raised and, and built into her intended purpose as we build up the group is, is what you're talking about, which is the community outreach. And particularly um, for that group to be a, a resource in a safe space, um, particularly for the youth in the community. Right to feel that they have a, a safe space to go as they're you know as they're if they don't feel that they can have that conversation at home or at school or you know within let's say their um you know their athletic team uh, you know thinking about our our role as a as a hockey club and so um, I I'm very excited about that opportunity that they're going to get to build because we we work as an organization so particularly so closely with our surrounding community and really trying to have those impacts and it's just such an important component that can get left off um, and so to have that be you know one of their main goals as an ERG is is really going to be exciting to to watch them develop. Yeah, that's fantastic. I love to see that. Um, Erve, how about you? Anything else that you want to add before we wrap up today? Yeah, two things on my end I'd like to touch base on. Uh, the first thing is actually a lot of our successes over the years. Um, we do a lot of advisement for United on behalf of our employees. And so if you think about recent successes, uh, we've advised the company on what we call our appearance guidelines before employees could have a little subtle piercing or couldn't have a tattoo or male employees couldn't have makeup, or non-binary employees um, add restrictions on what to wear. And so as we advise the company, we are breaking those barriers. And um, the latest one, which we're just about to launch is that all employees on their wings will actually have their pronouns. They would have a choice to actually be able to say he, him, they, them, and so on and so forth. A wide array of pronouns that they can choose from. And that to us is a huge deal. And we're also uh, pushing in a big way uh, what we call a self-identification campaign. And the reason we help the EDI team do this is when you enter a corporation, you typically collect statistics around uh, race, but you don't collect statistics around gender identification. And to us, it is one way to ensure that at the end of the day, we have representation. We do this in an anonymous way, of course. We do this in a voluntary way, of course. But we want to make sure that all employees that don't identify as straight be counted. That matters. Representation matters. And so that's a big deal for us. Um, and then the second aspect that I wanted to uh, bring up is uh, simply the very controversial uh, political environment we're in at the end of the day, right? Um, and how do we support best our employees in that climate? And what I always say is, we cannot obviously engage in the political debate, but actions speak louder than words. And that matters because we support our employees, we love each and every single one of our employees, and our outcomes really show at the end of the day, that United supports its employees regardless of uh, gender identity, regardless of color, and that we are here at the end of the day for employees. That to me is also the huge takeaway uh, of the BRG because we are here to advise the company on all those matters to make sure that we have a voice for LGBTQ plus employees. 
So that's all the time that we have now, but it was time so well spent. I just want to thank you both for sharing your, your knowledge um, and your experiences here with us today, Leah and Hervé. It's been a pleasure. Um, for those of you watching, happy Pride Month. And also please keep an eye out. We'll be sharing a, a blog with some additional resources that you can access as well. Wherever you are on your ERG uh, story and journey, we hope it's helpful and we hope that you've enjoyed this conversation. Thank you very much, Misu. Yes, thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye.